The golden age of bodybuilding refers to the era of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliver, all these awesome characters who had incredible physiques. They're applying principles and theory and lots of experience to their training now and some steroids, but they hadn't got to the point of modern day bodybuilders where you start to see these GH guts creeping in and these overblown physiques that a lot of people, myself included, don't like. One of the people who's responsible for much of this era was Joe Wider. He was a media mogul who talent spotted a lot of these characters, including Arnold Schwarzenegger. He observed the way these guys were training and took notes and he collected them in a series that he called the Joe Wider Training Principles. This gives us a lot of the ideas and the methods that we use in training today. Whether you're a newbie in the gym or an advanced athlete, chances are that you've used some of these principles. And there are also some of these principles that you probably haven't heard of. They're actually really awesome. So hopefully by watching this video, you'll discover some new approaches to your training. And hopefully you'll also see that bodybuilding can be functional. Not only does it build aesthetic muscle, large muscle, but it also builds power, speed, explosiveness, just like many of the functional forms of training that you see today. It kind of irks me when people say bodybuilders don't build real muscle or it's not functional, or it's not healthy. Sure, that's true of some bodybuilders, but if you look at these principles, you'll see that bodybuilding is not only responsible for many of the modern training programs that we do like today, but also it actually can build a lot of explosive strength and functional strength. So stay tuned and I'll show you some of the best Joe Wider training principles. Okay, so the principle that most of you might already be familiar with and already use in your workouts is the superset. A superset is very simply a set of one exercise followed by a set of another exercise. So instead of resting, you're alternating between different exercises. So we might do curls on the one hand. And then once we can't do any more curls and we're fatigued, then whilst we rest, we might train our triceps and we'll do tricep kickbacks. And then once we're finished with the tricep kickbacks, of course we would be doing this with both arms, then we head straight back to the curls. And by doing this, the whole workout's much more intense. You save a lot of time. And most people will train with either exercises focusing on the same muscle group or on antagonistic muscle groups, so the opposite one. So in that case, I was doing biceps and triceps. So say you're doing a mechanical drop set. In many ways, that is just a superset focusing on the same muscle group. You're doing two different exercises with minimal rest in between. If we wanted to do three different exercises, we'd call that a triset. And if you wanted to do more than three, you'd call that a giant set or a complex. And this basically means you're just running the gauntlet on that muscle. You might be doing three, four, five different exercises all targeting the same muscle group with minimal break in between. Then you rest and then you go again. And if you watch my recent video on metabolic resistance training, you'll know that this can actually be useful as well for cardio as well as causing massive muscle damage and signaling a lot of growth. The other thing that a lot of people might be somewhat familiar with and maybe use intuitively without even really knowing what it is, is the forced repetition. So a forced repetition means that you've got to the point of failure where you can do no more. And then instead of giving up, you're just finding any method you can in order to carry on. To go even further beyond. <laughs> so that's say we can do no more curls. Now I could just give up, but I instead have a few different options for continuing. So one option is to get an assist from a training partner. So that's an assisted repetition. Here I am assisting myself with my own hand, something that I am quite good at. Another option would be to lower the weight. And there you have another principle, which is the drop set. So in a drop set, all you're literally doing is lowering the weight so that you can, can carry on performing repetitions without stopping. If you're a fan of this channel, then you'll know that I'm a massive advocate of drop sets. They're the bedrock of my own training program. I also highly recommend mechanical drop sets. So a mechanical drop set means instead of dropping the weight, you're instead changing to a slightly easier exercise that nevertheless 
focuses on the same muscle group. So that might mean that you're doing as many isolation curls as you can, as many preacher curls as you can. It's like a weird cooking program. And then once you can't do any more of those, you're at failure, you switch to an easier option, which is just your regular curls. So that's a mechanical drop set. And we often use that in bodyweight exercises. So we might do as many press ups as we can um, and then drop to our knees and do as many press ups on our knees as we can. Another way to go past failure, another principle, which is a little bit more controversial, at least among people who aren't familiar with it, is cheats. So in cheats, you're not dropping the weight and you're not changing exercise, but you're going past failure by ruining your form. So you're making it slightly easier. And that's where the controversy comes in. So let's say we're doing hammer curls. You don't need to see my head. That's my least interesting feature anyways. So as you can see, these hammer curls, I'm already starting to fail. So what I might do then is to start swinging my body to get them up like so. So that's where the controversy comes in. A lot of people say, what's the point of doing it if you're not gonna do it properly? You're not building as much muscle, you're risking injury. Well, first of all, obviously, you need to change the technique. You need to cheat in such a way that isn't gonna risk damaging your back or damaging a muscle. Secondly, the whole point is that you have done as many as you can already with good technique. You're just switching now to a different technique in order to carry on. So the point is that you've reached failure, but now you're continuing to create even more uh, micro tears. You're continuing to pull the blood in the area and build up metabolites to signal growth. And you wouldn't be able to do that if you just carried on with the correct technique. And if you don't have a spot around and it takes a while to change the weights, then actually cheats can be quite a useful option. Kind of related to a drop set, but different, is the pyramid set. So in a pyramid set, oops, wrong weight. In a pyramid set, you start with your lightest weight. And then you build your way up to a heavier weight. So if you imagine you're going up a slope, up the side, oop, bit of a cheat there, up the side of a pyramid. And then you come back down. Now normally we do this with more weights. So you'd be going up, adding maybe five plates at a time, and then taking off five plates at a time. And that can be quite a beast. Another very interesting one is the pre-exhaust set. So a pre-exhaust set basically means that you're, say you're doing a multi-joint exercise, what you're gonna do is to pre-exhaust the target muscle first. Would you look at that, another dumbbell appeared. Just realized I'm doing this video in my slippers. It's not weird. So let's say that we're gonna do bench press. Before we go on to the bench press, we're gonna do tricep extensions or tricep kickbacks because we want to target the triceps. So here I am doing my tricep kickbacks. I'm gonna do them on both sides. And then I'm gonna go straight into my bench press. And because I've just done the tricep kickbacks, the triceps are gonna be much easier to overload. So in theory, we should now be working the triceps harder than the other muscle groups. Because the problem is when you do a compound lift, a multi-joint exercise, you're targeting multiple muscle groups. And any one of those muscle groups can be the first to give in and fatigue. So you might be doing bench press and your shoulders might give out before your triceps have reached that overload stage, before you've caused enough damage in the triceps. By doing the pre-exhaust first, you're getting the triceps to the point where they're more likely to give in first, so they're getting a really decent workout before that multi-joint exercise. Peak contraction means that you're gonna squeeze the muscle at the peak of the exercise by contracting it in order to increase intensity. So at the peak of the bicep curl, you really squeeze the bicep. Not only does it increase intensity, but it also strengthens that mind-muscle connection. Similarly, the isotension principle says that you should not completely rest and relax the muscles in between repetitions, but rather keep them contracted in between in order to keep the nerves firing, in order to maintain the mind-muscle connection. 
And this is very similar to the kind of thing that Bruce Lee recommends for power and performance. Here's a good one if you want a more intense workout. It's called rest pause. Basically, it means you're getting to the end of your set where you can do no more, the point of failure, which is a common topic you'll have noticed. But this time, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a very short rest, a very short pause, and then that's going to allow us to get straight back into it. So it's not full recovery, it's just giving us that tiny reprieve we need in order to pump out a few extra repetitions. That way we can avoid the lactic acid buildup that gets the muscle too painful to carry on and we can go past failure and we can do more repetitions than we otherwise would have been able to. Rest pause. A lot of these principles revolve around the idea of time under tension. The longer the muscle stays tensed during an exercise, the more growth you'll accomplish. This is a great way to get pump and again to build up metabolites that are gonna add to extra growth during your resting phase. Another one that a lot of people are familiar with is the partial rep. So in a partial rep, you just perform part of the movement. So here I'm performing just the start of the bicep curl. And then I might remember to perform just the top of the bicep curl. The most famous version of this is 21s, where you do seven of the first half, seven at the top and seven complete sets. Not only does that really isolate and focus on just a portion of the muscle, you also need a lot more muscle control. You can't use momentum. You can't allow the muscle to bounce back up. You need to control it, pause it, hold it. It's much more difficult and just give it a go. It's a pretty intense workout. Another one that I absolutely love is the burn set. And a burn set is another form of forced repetition or way of going past failure that you can do at the end of a regular set. I, again, I've talked about this before in a different video, but let's say I've done as many bicep curls as I can. The burn set means I'm just going to do a partial repetition, but that partial isn't a partial on purpose. It's because that's all I can literally do. So I've reached failure and I'm just doing as much of the motion as I now can. It absolutely kills. <clears throat> you have to listen to your body. So some of these are advanced techniques, by the way. Don't do this if you're completely new, build up to it. But if you're confident, it absolutely kills. It's a fantastic way. It's trying to get away from me. It's a fantastic way of really triggering growth in that muscle group. So I've talked quite a lot on this channel before about negatives and about slowly lowering the weight and how beneficial that can be not only for size, but also for explosive power and all sorts of other things. Well, just to prove to you that bodybuilders know their stuff, this has been going along in bodybuilding for a long time. They just call it negatives. So they'll take a weight that they can't lift easily on their own. They might use someone to assist them on the way up <clears throat> and then they just lower it in as slow and controlled a manner as possible. This can improve your flexibility, it can improve your explosiveness, and it's a fantastic way to build strength because you're actually stronger in this eccentric portion of the movement than you are in the concentric portion. Start to imagine what Arnie or Franco Colombo or Frank Zane's workouts would have looked like, combining all these different methods into some kind of really brutal regime where they're just doing everything they can to keep on going, to cause micro tears and to stimulate growth. And this is actually a principle in itself. It's the intuitive training principle, which basically means, or the instinctive training principle, it basically means that you're just listening to your own body because when you've been doing this long enough, you start to learn to feel what the right kind of pain should feel like, the right kind of burn. And once you can do that, you can just pick from all these different methods at random without going into the gym with a program and you can just hit it and you know exactly when you've done enough and then you can leave. Getting to that point is the hard part and actually using these techniques will help you to get there quicker. You can also call this electric training and electric training just means changing the different variables, the speeds, the sets, the reps, the organization of those different exercises. And by doing this, you're also making those workouts much more intense and you're hitting all the different muscle groups in different ways. Somewhat related to this is muscle confusion. Muscle confusion 
basically says that you shouldn't do the same exercises all the time or you'll plateau because you're not using different techniques, you're not using different supportive muscles, you're not building new neural connections. So if you want to keep growing, if you've hit a plateau, you need to mix it up by making every workout different. And by using electric training and intuitive training, instinctive training, you're much more likely to be able to achieve that muscle confusion because every time you go in there, you're just looking for that burn. You find it, you stick to that, you leave when you're done. I mean, I say that we take a lot of Joe Wider principles for granted, and I'm not kidding. He even gave us the sets principle. This is just the whole idea of training with sets of repetitions. It's something that we all do, whether you're an advanced bodybuilder, an athlete, or just a noob in the gym. So we all have a lot to thank him for. I mean, he didn't come up with the idea, but he did put pen to paper. There are millions of people who do bodybuilding every day and don't know it. Certainly, if you train in a serious bodybuilding gym, you are a bodybuilder. However, if you work out in a health club or spa, whether you use exercise machines, cables, or free weights, you're also a bodybuilder. So hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please click like down below. Please comment on this video. Let me know what you thought. I'm trying a slightly different format, just liking to mix things up. Um, would love to hear your thoughts on it and any suggestions for future videos. If you'd like to see more like this, then please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified of future videos. Got lots on the way. More training, bodybuilding, brain training. Going to be looking at some legends, some inspirational characters. And I'm even going to be doing some book reviews and gadget reviews in future. So if that all sounds interesting, then stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.